Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is it a beautiful day to come together with you and to worship and to share in God's word with one another. I hope, my friends, that you have had a wonderful past Thanksgiving week, that uh, you have been able to celebrate with family and friends as you've come together and to count the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us and to raise a prayer of thanksgiving. So I hope that that has been the case for each of you. We only have one announcement that we wanted to just invite you all to be a part of our first Wednesdays in December will take place on December 6th. We'll meet here at the Congregation of Trinity at 6.30 p.m. inside our gathering space. And then we'll board a bus and go Christmas caroling throughout town to different homes in our community. And it will be a wonderful opportunity to bring the good news of Jesus' birth through songs and our favorite Christmas carols. Wow. But after we're done singing, just know that we'll come back to the church for hot cocoa and cookies and wonderful goodies to just celebrate, again, the good news of Christmas. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that we are moving so quickly into the holiday seasons and that uh, we are singing Christmas carols and enjoying that time of the year. So my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Jesus, King of nations, Lord of all, magnificent and glorious, just and merciful. Lavish our hearts, affection, deepest love and highest praise, voice, race, and language blending all the world amaze. King of the nation, Jesus, Lord of all, Jesus, King of the nation, Lord of all. Bring tributes from the nation, come in joyful cavalcades, one thunderous acclamation, one band. the nation, Jesus, Lord of all, Jesus, King of the nation, Lord of all. Come, Lord, and fill your temple, glorify your dwelling place, till nations see your splendor, and seek your face. Jesus, King of the nation, Jesus, Lord of all, Jesus, King of the nation, Lord of all. Jesus, King of the nation, Jesus, Lord of all, Jesus, King of the nation, Lord of all. I invite you now into our time of confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened, I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth we confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. 
We ask now for body, mind, spirit, whole person nourishment, for rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings, where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us, where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us, where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, good morning, kids, and welcome to worship. It is so happy to be here with you and to share in God's word with you. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving and had time to eat lots and play with friends and family and such. But today, we've got a special story that we want to share with you. And it kind of like leads into helping others. Right, Pastor Eric? It is. And it comes through the story's name of sheep and goats. So let's see, how do sheep and goats tell us that we should help people in need in our community? Great. So it begins, Jesus told his disciples they were like sheep. When they cared for each other and Jesus was their shepherd, they would be like goats if they didn't listen and didn't care. He said, do you remember when you fed the woman who was hungry? Yes, they replied. Do you remember when you visited the old man in prison, he asked? Oh, yes, he was lonely, they answered. Do you remember when you gave clothing to the children who didn't have anything to wear? Jesus asked, yes, they were very cold. They remembered. Every time you care for someone, it is like you are caring for me too, Jesus explained. God will welcome you into the kingdom of heaven. The disciples wanted to be like sheep. They knew they would be welcome in heaven. Wow. So it's a story about sheep, but it's the sheep caring for others. Right, and it's thinking that we are like sheep and helping one another and following our divine shepherd and providing food to those who are hungry, clothes to those who need them, welcoming strangers. Wow. You know, Pastor Eric, we do some special things here at the at church here that help others. Um, we, we pack backpacks um, for people that might be hungry with right. some foods. Um, we help out at, at the food shelf, um, which is downtown. Pass and it on thrift store, helps with clothes. Clothing and such. Um, so there are many ways that, that we as a church body help fulfill that caring purpose that God calls us into doing and that Jesus wants us to do to care for one another. But I had a quick question for you. That's good to be doing those things connected to our church. That's who we are all as Christians. But are there other aspects that we should do that same mentality and same acts of service? Every day, Pastor Eric. Even kids, when you're on the playground, you know what? To go and play with somebody that maybe might be feeling a little lonely and maybe doesn't have a friend to play with, run over there. Have them come and play with you. That's showing God's love and caring for somebody. Um, Helping mom and dad at home, you know, when there are some things that need to be done around the house, you know, step up and say, hey, I can help. I want to help. So those are some special, unique things that you can do that we do every day. So if someone moves from far away into our town, just Mm -hmm. simply welcome them, whether they're on the playground here in town or on the playground at school. It's important for us to just know that we are called to help others in need, just as Jesus said, no matter if we're in church or out. Exactly. The last thing I want to, to recognize, Pastor Eric, is do you remember kids at our first Wednesday here last month? 
um, we had kind of like a Thanksgiving dinner downstairs where everybody came together and, and uh, shared in a meal. And then after that meal, um, we had placemats that we all colored. And we colored on the place masks, uh, mats, and, and it said Happy Thanksgiving on them and stuff. Well, you know what? We took those place mats and we brought them to the assisted living, to the nursing home, for people to enjoy what you colored. And it was a great opportunity to show that we love you and that we care about you. Right, and it's really living into our mission here at Trinity to share Jesus' love by meeting people where they are. Exactly. Whether they're in the pews, at home, Sister living, nursing home, memory care, or anywhere they may be found. Exactly. So, kids, always look to see where can I take care of somebody. Have a blessed Sunday. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Our first reading is from Ezekiel 34. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. The shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them onto their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and all the inhibited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Second reading is from Ephesians 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised from him the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends our second reading.
The gospel reading for this Christ the King Sunday is coming from the gospel writer Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you and from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw a, you as a stranger and then welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and then we visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are cursed apart from me and into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it when we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to the one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope, my friends, that this past week, this Thanksgiving week, that you've had the opportunity to spend time with family and friends. If family has traveled into town, I'm sure the anticipation and the excitement of them arriving was overwhelming as you prepared for their arrival. Yes, my friends, we have come through Thanksgiving, and now we move forward into the holiday seasons, a time of the year when we are busy getting things ready as the Holiday and the Christmas approaches rapidly. Getting ready, preparing. My friends, Lynn and I spent Thanksgiving alone, so it was quiet at our house. But we have begun to prepare for the anticipation of our kids coming home. We spend time sitting down and going through the menus, making out a list of the activities that we're going to do when they come, and we are so excited because this year we will have our entire family together for Christmas, and we are delighted and excited for that. Arriving. What is it about the anticipation of arrival that gets us excited. Well, my friends, as we are gathered here today celebrating Christ the King Sunday, are we anticipating his arrival? It kind of is a symbolic of that on this Sunday. 
this Christ the King Sunday when we recognize and proclaim the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Yes, it is. This Sunday, Christ the King Sunday, is the last Sunday of our liturgical year. It is the liturgical year that proclaims, recognizes, and leads us through that proclamation of who the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is. You see, next Sunday will be what we call the beginning of the liturgical year. It is the beginning of Advent. And it is in during that Advent season that we proclaim and we prepare the words that Isaiah shared with us when he prophesied that there will be a king that will come to us. So we move through Advent, the first portion of the liturgical year. And from Advent, we go in to Christmas, where it is in Christmas that we celebrate the birth of that king, the Messiah, this baby Jesus that is brought before us. And then following the Christmas season, we move through the epiphany. And it is in that season that we see the baptism of Jesus where God's voice comes from the heavens and proclaims, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And then as the liturgical year moves forward, we move into that season of Lent. That time of Lent when we recognize who Jesus really is and what his ministry is for us. As he begins to move closer to the cross. And then we recognize and celebrate not only the death of Jesus, but the resurrection of Jesus and the proclamation of he is the king of kings and the lord of lords and then from there on we move through Pentecost where Jesus promises to bring to us an advocate the Holy Spirit to help to guide to learn and to lead as we move through the rest of the liturgical year which on the calendar, it says it is the ordinary time, the time when we can grow and learn in our own faith that brings us to this day, Christ the King Sunday, when we proclaim that he is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, as we celebrate his coming. Today in the gospel reading, it starts out as we hear the words, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels are with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. The glory that we have learned throughout the liturgical year, and we gather here this day to celebrate the King is coming. The King is coming. So my friends, how are you preparing for that? How are you recognizing that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Well, in the gospel reading that we hear today, he gives us some guidance, some things that he calls us to do to prepare for his arrival. Come, you that are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. And I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. And I was in prison, and you visited me. Wow. God is calling us to do 
unto others to come alongside those that are struggling to be with those that need someone to walk alongside of them have you done that this past year <laughs> as you have learned of who the king of king and the lord of lords is have you been there for others my friends i want to say yes you have yes you have in the ministries that we have here at trinity lutheran church the food shelf that many of us are a part of the backpack program that we have here the people that we go out to visit to support to come alongside that's what god's calling us to do to be there I want to share a little story of you for you that changed my life. It happened about 25 years ago. Linda and I had given of ourselves to help with some of the refugee families that have come into the Pelican Rapids area during that time period. We had offered to give rides to transport and wherever. And so one Friday evening we were given a call and asked if we could transport a particular family to a home that was about 30 miles away from here. And we said, yes, we'd gladly do that. And so we gave ourselves, we met that next morning and, and uh, loaded the family up with their possessions and then we transported them to a place that had been offered up to them. The unfortunate part when we got to where this place was it didn't work out. It didn't work out for them to stay there, to be there. So now, we found ourselves in a dilemma. This family couldn't go back to where we had picked them up from. They were refugees for over five years in another country and finally made it here. And now to be lost again and not knowing what to do was in that moment, my friends, that the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I looked at my wife, Linda, as the mother of this family was standing with us. And I said to Linda, they can come and live with us until we figure something out. And Linda looks at me and says, Yes, give us some time to go and prepare to welcome them into our home. My friends, we did. We welcomed this family into our home, Idris, Jamelia, their two children, Adnan and Lydia. And they lived with us for about two weeks. It was the most beautiful time in our lives that we were able to embrace someone in need to give them a home security and an opportunity to try and figure out what their next steps were. A beautiful time. In the spring of 1997, we dropped them off at the bus depot. With hugs and tears, we bid them farewell. God's blessings and God's peace as they moved on in their lives. My friends, that's what God calls us to do. To come alongside each other. To walk with each other. Mother Teresa was asked once how she found the strength to move through the desperate situations that she found herself in. And the unique response that Mother Teresa gave to that question was the five fingers of the gospel of Matthew chapter 25. I did it to 
you. I did it to you. My friends, in the gospel reading that we had today, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are my members of my family, you did it to me. You did it to me. So my friends, as we celebrate this Christ the King Sunday, as we celebrate and the anticipation of the King is coming, may we sing with joyful noise that he is coming. Amen. Marketplace is empty, no more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent, no more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors in the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate happy faces line the hallways those whose lives have been redeemed broken homes that he has mended those from prison he has freed little children and the aged hand in hand stand all aglow who were crippled broken ruin clad in garments white as snow i can hear the chariots rumble i can see the marching throng the flurry of god's trumpet spells the end of sin and wrong real robes are now unfolding heaven's grass stands all in place heaven's choir is now assembled starts to sing amazing grace oh the king is coming the king trumpet sounding and now his face I see the king is coming the king is coming praise God he's coming for me oh the king is coming the king I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. The King is coming, the King is coming, praise God, he's coming for me.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath, and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we received our call to feed, to clothe, and to welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and a generous love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with the mountains, the seas, the dry lands, and the animals of the field. We thank you. Help us to seek out your guidance and protection of all that you have blessed us with. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care towards us. Nourish all who hunger. Connect any who are isolated and surround all who are ex experiencing rejection or abuse. We remember today Charles Nettisted, Megan Harthoon, Ashley Harthoon, Kathleen Bruns Doppler, Ardine Erickson, Carol Zielinski, Don Rongren, Jim Rood, Earl Mickelson, and all others whom we lift before you from our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ we are made the people of his pastures. Inspire the outreach and the social ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, in Christ we are welcomed home. We praise you for your faithful witness of those who have served you and extend your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, let us give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, the state of Minnesota, our country, and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Well, my friends, as we come to the close of this worship service, of this time being together, as you go out into the remainder of this day and into the week before us, go with this blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your backs. May the sunshine warm upon your faces and the snows fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Sing a song of celebration, lift up a shout of praise, for the bridegroom will come, the glorious one. And oh, we will look on his face, we'll go to a much better So dance with all your might, lift up your hands and clap for joy, the time's drawing near, when he will The glorious bride, the great son of man From every time and tribe and the nation Will join in the song of the land Sing a song of celebration Lift up a shout of praise For the bridegroom will come He's a glorious one song of
land. So my friends, as we come to the close of this service, as you go out into this week, remember the gospel of Matthew. In five fingers, you did it to me. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless.